Hi there, Doug Stuman with IT Creations. Today we'll be taking a look at what Tyon calls a pedestal workstation in some areas and in others a pedestal server. The actual chassis is the Tyon Transport HX FT65TB8030 and there's three different versions. We'll be looking at the B8030 F65TV8E2H-2T-N. And looking at the specs for this system, it's clearly more suited for use as a fairly high performance tower server, and we'll present our case for that in a minute. It can be outfitted with a single AMD Epic 7002 or 7003 series CPU, plus multiple NVIDIA GPUs, the good ones. Let's take a look. I suppose in fairness, you could use it to provide workstation assets as a rack mounted workstation server. The supported OS kind of seals the deal with Windows Server 2019 and Linux as the only ones mentioned in the compatibility list. There are a bunch of these pedestal servers in Tyon's arsenal, each with a long serial number type identifier, and all look pretty much essentially the same. I really wish Tyon and a few other manufacturers would use something a little less complex than the naming convention. I don't know, maybe something like the T9000 Sport and Track Tower server. That one kind of borrowing from both cinema and cars. In this particular family, there are three versions, including the one we're looking at today. I'm not even going to mention the other family that looks just like this one, but only supports third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. On another note, HX Thunder supports Intel Xeons and HX Transports have AMD Epics. Anyways, let's get into it. The differences between these platforms are slight. Our unit, the B8030F65TV8E2H-2TN, and we'll just call it the dash 2TN for simplicity, has two 10 gigabit ethernet ports plus two one gigabit ethernet ports, and these two fans barnacled on the back of the unit. The N version only has two one gigabit ethernet ports plus the same fan bracket on the back. Lastly, the dash G version, which also supports two one gigabit ethernet ports, does not have the additional two fan bracket in back. And that would be where the differences end. I'll support a single second generation ROM or third generation Milan AMD Epic series processor. Apparently the fans are only for support of the passively cooled NVIDIA Tesla GPU cards. So maybe no NVIDIA Teslas on the Dash G version. And with that being said, I suppose you could take off that fan bracket and use it as a workstation since then you would have access to the PCI cards on the exterior of the system for monitor support. But there is that pesky OS issue and I'm sure associated drivers might be impacted as well. Anyways, while we're at it, let's see what else is on the back. Above the LAN ports just mentioned, there is a legacy COM port and VGA port, plus two USB 3.1 ports. Next, a dedicated RJ45 port for access to the Integrated Platform Management Interface, or IPMI. That last one on top is the ID button, so if you were to rack mount this system, which you can, you can easily identify it from the other servers in the rack. We haven't even finished the review yet, but I can tell that you might be interested in this system. If you are, then for a limited time, you can save up to $500 off the purchase of a system you can configure on our site that's worth $5,000 or more. That's right, just click that link to start assembling a platform specifically to your specifications. Just don't forget to mention this video at the time of purchase to get the discount. You may have noticed on top of all the ports and back, there's that strange plug and the non-removable, non-redundant single PSU. Only with a 200 through 240 volt outlet will you get the full power from the 2000 watt PSU pretty standard for server rooms. You'll get 1500 watts with a 115 through 200 volt outlet, or only 1200 watts using a 100 through 115 volt outlet. Along with the other PCI slots behind the extra fan bracket, there is another set of PCI slots to the right of all the ports, and we'll look at those after we pop the cover off, which is done by removing those two thumb screws on the right. I will mention there is a cable for a European outlet configuration included with the system. This package is very complete. On the front of this system, starting at the bottom, there are eight SAS SATA 3.5 inch hot swap drive bays. If you plan on using SAS drives, you will need a SAS HBA RAID controller. SATA is supported at six gigabits per second, while SAS will provide a data transfer rate at up to 12 gigabits per second. On top of those are two small form factor 2.5 inch drive bays for native support for NVMe U.2 drive formats with a PCIe connection. That said, it can also be used to support SATA drives with two SATA connectors. Both the SFF and LFF bays have toolless drive bays for easy access. If you want to go with 2.5 inch drives and the 3.5 inch drive bays, you will be using four screws for each of the eight drive trays, also included with the purchase. Next, a removable panel, which looks as though it could support some additional drive bays, a tape backup drive, or some other storage media. However, there is no mention of possible uses in the manual or anywhere else for that matter. 
consider it a mystery, like the naming convention. Then a space for an optional optical drive. Above that, the control panel has the on-off button, telltale lights for LANs 1 through 3, IPMI LED, HDD LED, and ID LED. Next, a reset button, non-maskable interrupt button, and ID button. Then a few USB 3.1 ports. Opening the case, there is a lot of space to work with. Right in the middle, three large fans are standard equipment on all three chassis configurations. As mentioned, that CPU socket supports either an AMD Epic 7002 Rome or 7003 Milan CPU. Both will support 8 to 64 physical cores and 16 to 128 virtual threads. You also get 128 PCI 4.0 lanes. 7003 Milan series processors offer a 19% increase in performance over Rome and have better integrated security features, plus a higher clock speed and wattage in general. The system is limited to CPUs with a wattage of up to 280 watts, which pretty much leaves it open to anything you want to add. Keeping it cool is a heatsink with attached fan for active cooling. Epics with a P are specifically designed for single processor implementations, which can also help to save you a few bucks. You can install any of the other CPUs in the family too, but if you are looking to save a little something, go with the P options. It's not like you can add a second CPU anyways. Supported memory capacity for Gen 3 Epic Milan CPUs is a little higher at 4 terabytes per socket compared to only 2 terabytes per socket on 7002 series. Both deliver 8 memory channels. On this system, we have 8 memory module slots total and are limited to 2 terabytes for either Rome or Milan. Either registered or load-reduced DDR4 memory modules can be installed in the system, operating at speeds of up to 3200 mega transfers per second. There are five PCI 4.0 by 16 slots, each with a by 16 link on the system board, and another PCI 4.0 by 16 slot with a by 8 link supported in the pre-installed tie-in riser. All made possible by 128 PCI 4.0 lanes supported by the AMD Epic CPUs. It's designed to support up to four double-wide, high-performance NVIDIA GPUs and comes with all the power and signal cables plus the GPU brackets to mount them. Just a matter of note, if you do install four double-wide GPUs, one of the five PCI slots on the system board will be blocked. Like I said earlier, that fan bracket in back is required if you plan on installing the passively cooled NVIDIA Tesla options, which include the NVIDIA Tesla T4 at the low end, great for distributed environments, and the Tesla V100S and V132GIG GPUs at the upper end. I don't think you'll need the extra fans for those single-width T4 GPUs. However, the V100S is built as the world's most advanced data center GPU ever for high-performance computing plus graphics and AI applications. It's a faster version of the V132G and comes with 32 gigs too. You will need that fan for those. Mind you, these GPUs are only rated for PCI 3.0, which is really not an issue given the newness of PCI 4.0 and the actual amount of data being transferred. I will add one more to that PCI 3.0 list, which is the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000. The Quadro RTX 6000 offers superb performance for advanced computer graphics, hardware accelerated ray tracing, also great for deep learning, plus realistic shading, enabling fast content creation. Very good for a server-based workstation appliance supporting a few high-performance virtual machines. You can even strap an NVLink bridge on for those multi-GPU configurations and data transfer speeds of up to 100 gigabytes per second and a combined 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory for highly complex renderings. Also supported, the NVIDIA Quadro A4000 and A5000 GPUs offering Ampere architecture and support for PCIe Gen 4.0. Those ones are created for designers, engineers, and artists. They too also support NVIDIA's NVLink for large data sets and rapid visualizations. I am missing a few of the GPUs that are compatible with this system, but most likely it will support several other NVIDIA GPUs as well. They just haven't been tested yet. That pre-installed tie-in riser straddles the CPU and memory module slots from the fan supports to the rear of the chassis. The single PCI 4.0 slot can be used to support a SAS, HBA, or RAID controller card. It can also be used for a performance I.O. card, especially if you install that fourth GPU and block off that board accessible PCI slot. If installing Tesla GPUs, it wouldn't matter anyways because that fan bracket on the back is required in that case. Not to mention some of the other supported GPUs require the three internal fans and potentially the rear fans running at full bore. Two PCI 4.0 by four slots on the system board can be outfitted with NVMe M.2 drives that will extend between the lower three PCI slots. Those can be used in a mirror mode to support the OS. Right in front of those M.2 drives, you have the Aspeed AST 2500 module for remote and at chassis management of the system. The system uses a modified Megarack SP-X solution to manage the system, which enables compatibility with a number of other third-party hardware and software manufacturers. 
The interface itself has a standard interface without any colorful graphics and provides the basics for system health and managing the system plus remote IKVM at no additional cost. As a tower server or for edge applications and providing support for up to four high performance GPUs, this is a great little big system. It's not small and it may need its own space if you plan on configuring this platform with all four GPUs and all fans running rampant. It does get a little noisy, but still for certain applications this platform excels. Not to mention it provides a lower cost alternative to a dual processor platform plus significant expansion capabilities and no cost management software. All things to consider for a medium to small size business. If you liked our review, give us the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't worry, we won't put out material like every day and typically not every week either, so you won't be bombarded. If you have any questions about this platform or any other, place them in the comment section below. I also added a few links for more information on this platform in general and purchasing information. Until next time, I'm Doug Stumann with IT Creations and thanks for watching.